Hi, my name is Josh Romack, and today I have the awesome opportunity to talk to you about being anchored in God's love. It says in Psalms 103, verses 8 through 12, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He's slow to anger, and he's abounding in love. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. And for as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Before I go any further, quick fun fact. There are roughly 4,200 religions on this earth. 4,200. Out of the roughly estimated 7.5 billion people on this planet, over 6 billion of them are part of some religion. That's over three quarters of the world's population. But the interesting thing is that Christianity is the only religion that says you don't have to earn your way into heaven by doing good things and by being righteous. Christianity says if you repent of your sins, you declare with your mouth, and you believe in your heart that Jesus is your savior, you are saved. You are accepted into his family. In Ephesians, it says through grace we are saved, through faith, and not because of our own works. And in Deuteronomy, it says, do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. For the Lord goes with you. He never leaves you and he never forsakes you. I don't know about you, but a God that's so filled with love and a God that's so filled with compassion and a God that is so filled with grace is a God worth getting to know and a God worth worshiping. You see, we have an awesome opportunity. That opportunity is to give back God the love that he first gave us. This is worship. Worship changed my life. A few years ago, worship used to be something that was boring for me. It wasn't very exciting. It was kind of anticlimactic, and it just seemed like a waste of my time. But last year, over Flower City and a youth retreat, I began to realize that worship wasn't so boring. There was more to worship than what met the eye. It was something to get excited about. I realized that worship was not an obligation, but it was an opportunity to grow closer to the heart of God. I learned that worship wasn't just about singing words to songs, but I realized worship was about living the songs that I sang. It wasn't until I truly learned to worship that I experienced God in my heart in a way that I never had before. When we truly experience who God is in our hearts and in our lives, and we don't just know about it in our heads, then all of our suspicions and all of our uncertainties about the plan God has for us fade away. When we experience God in our hearts and we don't just know him in our heads, then all of our suspicions and uncertainties about the plan God has for us fade away. Oswald Chambers says the root of all evil is the suspicion that God is not good. Worship drops the ax right on that root that says God is not good. Jonathan David Helser says if we put our identity in God and we sing songs that proclaim and declare who he is, we remember who we are. That means if we put our identity in God and, and through worship we sing songs about his peace and we sing songs about his goodness and about his love, we remember that we're loved and that we're cared for. You've heard what worship has done in my life. Now just think, what could worship do in your life, this church, and the people around you? That's all I have. Thank you so much for listening.